Shalom. Shalom. Greetings, everyone. All praise to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. Glad to have you all here. Yes, we are. Thank you for joining our family. Yes, indeed. Today, in Ahaya's grace, Yache be with us. We're going to be looking at understanding the Trinity, to understand the three. Ahaya has been very gracious in his opportunity for us to learn the truth by giving us a testimony in his creation. As he talks about in uh, Psalms 19, how the heavens declare the handiwork of Allah Hayim, and day unto day and night unto night they to his speech, and there's no language where their voice cannot be heard. So everything in creation is a testimony for us. That's why Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he used the parable of a seed and how he has to die it before he can bear grain or fruit to explain the resurrection. So having this simplicity of wisdom, looking at creation to understand everything, we can understand the Allah Hayam through his very creation that we are and the things around us. So Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Elohim's head, so that they are without excuse. The Elohim itself is understood by the things that are made according to the scriptures. And if you have been going along with us for some time, you know the website, we have the Hebrew document with the Hebrew words, document the evidence of the Hebrew language. And in that document, number 122 to 124, you can understand the original Hebrew word, Alahayim, which is the powers that control the land and the waters. We can understand this Alahayim just by looking at what is in the earth. And according to the scriptures, we know there are three. And we're going to also see as we go along that all three work together in unity, but they are not literally the same entity. All right. Because each has a life in themselves and power in themselves. Because the Father is above all. He is Ahaya. He existed before existence was. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. And from him came forth his breath, which is the Holy Spirit. Because the word breath and spirit is the same word in Hebrew, ruaka. And when he breathed forth that breath, his word came forth after. Which the word is the sun, as we're going to go along and see here, going through the scriptures. So, 1 John 5 and 7, please. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So those are the three. And right. these three are one. And the word one in the Hebrew language is akadu, that's h Two five nine, and you can find it in the Hebrew document in number one eleven. And the word is a powerful word because Hebrew is the original language. The word "akado" in Igbo today they use it to say like it is what it is, like it's true. And it's interesting because the Hebrew Creed and the first great commandment that Yahche had given, he said, "Here, O Israel, Ahaya, our Elohim is one." which in the Hebrew language is Shema Echere Allah, Ahaya, Allah Noah, And the word Or Kaodo, Or means it, Ka means together with, united, and Do means to be, to exist, to be first. So the word Or Kaodo lets you know that they are together because of Ka, and Do lets you know they exist, and Do also means first. So it lets you know they were the first to exist. That's why Ahaya, Alahayam, is the Alahayam of Alahayams. So these three are first Alahayam, and the ones that came after, Yache created them. Right. So the language helps us understand that they work together. They're in complete unity, as we are to be. An example of that with, you know, husband and wife and whatnot. The next verse is going to further show that they three work together, but they're not literally the same. Because what the scripture says in verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And he expound on it to say they agree in one. That's right. Because you cannot replace your spirit with water. You will die. You cannot replace your water with blood. You will die. Okay. You need each one. You need the spirit. You need the water. You need the blood to live. That's right. 
And even that makeup of our body is a testimony because you have the water repentance unto the Father, the blood atonement of the Son, to receive the seal of the Holy Spirit, the Mother, that you may actually be one, to be whole. This is the great testimony that we are as living beings to this day. Now, we will look at the different attributes. You have Yache, he is the Word, according to the scriptures the one of the three, the word that was used to create everything. And we're going to see that that word became flesh. In John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim. And the scriptures confirm this to be true, that the Son was with the Father. Because Hermas, parable 9, chapter 12, verse 2, please. Chapter Hermas, parable 9, chapter 12, verse 2. The son of Elohim is older than all his creation, so that he became the father's advisor in his creation. Therefore, also, he is ancient. So we have confirmation that the son of Elohim, before he came into the world to be made flesh, he was in the beginning with Elohim, and he was his advisor. Let's continue in John chapter 1 and read the rest of verse 1, please. And the word was Elohim. So Christ is not only an advisor to the father, He's also an Elohim himself, and it's confirmed in Scripture because when Thomas understood who Christ truly was, he said in John 20 and 28, My Lord and my Elohim. Let's continue in John chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, please. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. So that lets you know that Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, when it says, In the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth, that word Elohim there is plural. Right. And in that plurality, there's also the Holy Spirit. She was created first. According to Ecclesiasticus chapter 1, verse 4, it reads, Wisdom hath been created before all things, and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. It was the Father that created the Holy Spirit first. When we read Ecclesiasticus chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, please. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 1, verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord, sitting upon his throne. He created her, and saw her, and numbered her, and poured her out upon all his works. So the Father created the Holy Spirit himself. And the Holy Spirit herself tells how the Father created her. In Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, verse 3, please. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, verse 3. And I came out of the mouth of the Most High, and covered the earth as a cloud. There we see the simplicity to know that Elohim breathed, and the Holy Spirit was created out of his mouth. And scripture also shows that she is the mother of all creation. Can you read Acts of Thomas chapter 39, please? Acts of Thomas chapter 39. We glorify and praise you, and thine invisible Father, and thine Holy Spirit, the mother of all creation. So there truly is a father and mother in heaven. And Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23 said, For Allah created man to be immortal and made him an image of his own eternity. So truly being made male and female is truly an image of his own eternity because that's an image of the Holy Father and the Holy Spirit, the mother of all creation. Being a mother of all creation, the angel confirmed to Hermas that she created the whole creation, and Elohim showed Baruch that his spirit is the creator of life. Can you read Hermas parable 5 and 2 Baruch chapter 23 verse 5, please? Shepherd Hermas parable 5, chapter 6 verse 5. The holy pre-existent spirit which created the whole creation. Thank you, brother. Can you also read 2 Baruch chapter 23, verse 5, please? 2 Baruch chapter 23, verse 5. Before, therefore, the number of foresaid is fulfilled, the creature will not live again, for my spirit is the creator of life. So being the mother of all creation and the creator of life helps understand that even as mothers today create children in their womb and give them life, the Holy Spirit created the Son, known as the Word, in her womb, and gave him life. Christ himself said his true mother gave him life, 
to understand this wisdom. In Gospel of Thomas, verse 101, please. Gospel of Thomas, chapter 101. For my mother Mary is my mother of the flesh, but my true mother gave me life. So just as a woman takes a man's seed in conception and brings forth a child unto life, even so the invisible father and the true mother began their creation with Christ. Christ himself said he is the beginning of the creation of Allah Hayyam. Can you read Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 please? Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Lodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Allah Hayyam. The word truly was the beginning of the creation of Allah Hayyam. In the Odes of Solomon, we can get understanding that the Father was milked by the Holy Spirit. And she mixed the mixture of the Father to create the Son. Just as a woman takes seed from a man to make a child. The Odes of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 1 to 4. A cup of milk was offered to me, and I drank it in the sweetness of the Lord's kindness. The son is the cup, and the father is he who was milked. So notice, the milk that's within the cup is something which is being described as milk that came from the father. And by precept, the milk is the word. When you read the epistle of Barnabas, chapter 6, verse 17, and also you know Peter spake of receiving the sincere milk of the word. So we actually learn about how the word of Allah was created by the father and the mother. And we know the word that is being created would be the third Allah to bear witness in heaven. And he would be the advisor to the father in his creation. And he would end up becoming flesh as the only begotten of the father according to John 1 and 14. Continuing. And the Holy Spirit is she who milked him. So notice the Spirit took the milk from the Father. Because his breasts were full, and it was undesirable that his milk should be released without purpose. For those of you that are of age, you can understand the release of milk in this metaphoric speech. The Holy Spirit opened her bosom and mixed the milk of the two breasts of the Father. Here, yeah, the milk received from the Father is being mixed by the Holy Spirit, even as a man's seed is nurtured in the womb of a woman. So the invisible things are truly seen by the things that are made. Continuing reading. The Spirit opened her bosom and mixed the milk of the two breasts of the Father. Then she gave the mixture to the generation without their knowing. And those who have received it, are in the perfection of the right hand. Notice they're in the perfection of the right hand. To help understand who's that milk? The right hand of the Father, which is the Son. As Isaiah 53 says, Who shall believe our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So we see through Scripture that the Son truly was the beginning of the creation of the invisible Father and the Holy Spirit, the mother of all creation. Hopefully now we better understand how he truly is the firstborn of every creature. <laughs> Can you read Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 17 please? Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature? Hopefully now we truly understand that he is the firstborn of every creature from his parents. After he was created, he created everything else by the Holy Spirit, his mother's wisdom, because she's poured out on all the works of the Father as we read in Sirach, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Hence, she is credited as the creator of the whole creation. Continue in Colossians 1 and 16, please. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So now we got more of the story to know that after he came forth, 
as the firstborn and only begotten son of the womb of wisdom, he became the father's advisor in creation, and he created all things according to wisdom, and by him all things consist. So him being from the beginning, and one of the Alahayims among the three that bear witness in heaven, he himself attests that they three are Alahayims. In Gospel of Thomas, chapter 30, please. Gospel of Thomas, chapter 30. Yahshe said, Where there are three Alahayims, they are Alahayims. Where there are two or one, I am with him. That verse, along with 1 John 5 and 7, confirm that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are each deities, not one and the same deity. So the Word, which is Christ, according to the Spirit, after the inner man, truly was with Alahayim in the beginning, and is one of the Alahayims that bear witness in heaven, as John has edified us on in the book of John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 5. And now with understanding, we can truly say Christ is our Lord and our Alahayim. And also for our edification, we can look in the scriptures to see that all three of them are actually worshipped in the heaven. So you can understand why we give praise to the Father, Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, the Son, Yache Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Let's look to see what happens in the seventh heaven. In the ascension of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6 to 8. And he took me up into the seventh heaven, and there I saw a wonderful light, and also angels without number. And there I saw all the righteous from the time of Adam onwards. And there I saw the holy Abel and all the righteous. And there I saw Enoch and all who were with him, stripped of the robes of the flesh. And I saw them in their robes of above. And they were like angels who stand there in great glory. Now, jump into Ascension of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 27 to 42, to see who's worshipped up there. And it reads, And I saw one standing whose glory surpassed that of all, and his glory was great and wonderful. And when they saw him, all the righteous whom I had seen and the angels came to him, and Adam and Abel and Seth and all the righteous approached first and worshipped him. And they all praised him with one voice, and I also was singing praises with them, and my praise was like theirs. And then all the angels approached and worshipped and sang praises. And he was transformed and became like an angel. And then the angel who led me said to me, Worship this one. And I worshipped and sang praises. And the angel said to me, This is the Lord of all the praise which you have seen. Now, in verse 33, this is transitioning to see who else was praised. And while I was still speaking, I saw another glorious person who was like him. And the righteous approached her, and worshipped and sang praises, and I sang praises with them. But her glory was not transformed to accord with their form. And then the angels approached and worshipped her. And I saw the Lord and the second angel, and they were standing. And the second one, whom I saw, was on the left of my Lord. And I asked the angel who led me and said to him, Who is this? And he said to me, Worship that one, for she is the Holy Spirit, who speaketh in you and also in the other righteous. Now in verse 37 we transition to see who else is worshipped. Verse 37 And I saw the great glory, the eyes of my spirit were open, but I could not thereafter see nor the angel who was with me, nor any the angels whom I saw worship my Lord. But I saw the righteous as they beheld with great power the glory of that one. And my Lord approached me, and the Holy Spirit said, See how it is given to you to see Ahaya? And because of you power has been given to the angel who is with you. And I saw how my Lord and the Holy Spirit worshipped, and they both together praised Ahaya. And then all the righteous approached and worshipped. And the angels drew near and worshipped, 
and all the angels sang praises. Chapter 10, verse 1 to 6. And thereupon I heard the voices and the hymns of praise, which I had heard in each of the six heavens, which I had heard as I ascended there. And all the voices and hymns of praise were directed to that glorious one whose glory I could not see. And I also heard and saw the praise which was directed to him. And the Lord and the Holy Spirit heard everything and saw everything. And all the praise which was sent up from the six heavens was not only heard but seen. And I heard the angel who led me, and he said to me, This is the Most High of the High Ones who dwells in the holy world, who rests among the holy ones, who will be called by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of the righteous, the Father of the Lord. So hopefully this helps give understanding that the Alahayim, the three that bear witness in heaven, are all praised and worshipped. And above all, the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Christ, is worshipped. Can we pick back up at John chapter 1, verse 2. 2 through 9 and verse 14 please to finish getting edification on the word of Allah Hayyam. all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made we understand this better now because we know wisdom was created before all things and then the word was the beginning of the creation of the Allah Hayyam. and when he was created he created all things as we're here reading about in John um, continuing in him was life and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there you see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, when he said, let there be light, right. he sent his word forth, and the darkness could not comprehend it. All right. And now we know that first light in Genesis was an illuminary like the sun and the moon that was later created. But it was our Lord. So he was speaking truly when he said he is the light of the world. Yet everyone didn't know who he was, so someone had to come edify us about him. Continue reading, please. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name was Yachanan. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Hopefully that helps understand why John the Baptist was held in such high esteem in the sight of Allah for making us aware of who the true light is that we may believe on him. All right, jump to verse 14 so we can see what the word and true light ended up doing. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So hopefully you get a better understanding now that the word of Allah one of the three is the only begotten son of the father and he became flesh and blood whom we know as Yahshua christ our lord and allah Hayim, because he is our everlasting father who created us before he came into the world and put on flesh and he is worshipped and praised amongst the righteous and the holy angels now in our studying of the trinity you may have heard that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one and the same deity. But we know that oneness is due to them being in agreement together, even as our flesh, blood, and spirit agree together. In the scriptures, Christ also explains that Him and the Father have life in themselves. He doesn't explain them as being one and the same deity. Can you read John chapter 5, verse 26 and 27, please? For at the Father hath life in Himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. So just as a man and his Son have life within themselves, even so the Father and the Son have life within themselves. And continue. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. So Allah I am in his compassion committed judgment unto him because he truly is a flesh and blood man as well. So we wouldn't be able to say his judgment is unrighteous because, as Paul explained in Hebrews 4 and 15, how Christ was touched with the feeling of our infirmities being tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So his judgment would be righteous because he really partook in everything we partook in, putting on flesh and blood. 
Also, you can confirm that Alahayam being one doesn't literally mean they're one and the same deity because Alahayam made us in his image, male and female. And when male and female agree together, they become one flesh to help us understand the oneness of Alahayam is in regards to being in agreement together. Mark chapter 10 verse 6 and verse 8. But from the beginning of the creation, Alahayam made them male and female. And remember, brothers and sisters, from wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23, that that's the image of his own eternity. Verse 8. And they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. So as a man and his wife are one, though they are two separate entities, even so, the Alahayam is one, though they are three that bear witness in heaven. Because mankind was made in the image of Alahayam, male and female, so that we could understand the invisible things, even the Alahayam head. Now, continuing in understanding that the Alahayams aren't literally one and the same. Look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 to 13. You can see there that Daniel saw the vision that the Son of Man had <laughs> came out to the Father, which makes it very clear according to the scriptures that the Father sits on his throne. He does not move from the throne. If he moved, we would be in a lot of trouble. Right. Because when the Father merely turns and looks upon the angels, the whole creation shakes according to the testament of Levi. It's just that we, the sons of men, don't have any knowledge of this. So. The Son is who's been delegating and doing everything according to the Father's will. So, Daniel 7, 9 to 13. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the throne were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. That's the Father. Right. Ancient of Days. He was before time. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like... The fiery flame, his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Jump to verse 13, okay. please. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. And came to the Ancient of Days and <laughs> brought him near before him. And we know who that's speaking about. Right. The one like the Son of Man, Yache just said, he's the Son of Man. That's right. So that's Yache being brought to the Father. So you can see, according to the scriptures, they are not literally the same entity. But Yache is indeed the Son of Alahayim. And that's he's right. his son just as we understand sons today in our everyday activity. Right. We have children, they are sons. Now that we understand the Son pretty well, let's understand the other deity, the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, please. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Now we understand he's having a conversation. He said, let us make man in our image. He's speaking to someone there. Let's continue. After our likeness. He said, our likeness, let's make them like us. That's right. Right? Okay. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. Now it's a wonderful thing because we know the father is a male, right. and the son is a male. Right. Yet, there were three there, because the Holy Spirit was there as well. That's right. Those three had a conversation, and they said, let us make man in our image. And in the end, they made them male and female. That lets us know that one of them is a female. That's right. And linguistically, the Holy Spirit is called the comforter. <laughs> that is not a male spirit. The word ruaka, the word for spirit, it's a feminine word in itself. Right. And looking at the scriptures, the truth is the truth. It substantiates itself. This was a mystery as well in Ephesians chapter 5, 
Paul said something here that <laughs> kind of it might have went over some people's heads, <laughs> but it's wonderful because what he said substantiates what is true that the Father is Ahaya and the Ruach Akwadoshi. The Holy Spirit is the mother. <laughs> Can you read Ephesians 5, 31. 32? For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and they too shall be one flesh. This is interesting, because Yache came down for his bride. <laughs> so who did he leave? <laughs> and what does Paul say? <laughs> This is the great mystery, but I speak concerning Messiah and the church. <laughs> so Yache left his father, Ahaya, and his mother, the Ruach Akwadoshi, to be with his wife. That was a great mystery, to understand that the Holy Spirit was the mother. And the scriptures confirm it. If we look at the Gospel of Thomas, verse 101, to hear what Yache says, to substantiate what Ahaya showed us here. The Gospel of Thomas, verse 101. Yache said, Whosoever does not hate his father and his mother as I do, cannot become a disciple to me. And whosoever does not love his father and mother as I do, cannot become a disciple to me. For my mother Mary is my mother of the flesh, but my true mother gave me life. <laughs> He said it clearly. Right. You have Paul said that in Romans 1 and 3 that he's of the seed of David according to the flesh. Yache himself says, for my mother Mary is my mother according to the flesh. That's right. But my true mother gave me life. Because mm. Yache is the firstborn of the womb of wisdom. Mm. And she gave him life. He emanated from the Alahayim, from the father and the mother. Mm. And it's his own words, and we praise our hair for it. And he testifies further of this in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. This is Yahweh speaking through Solomon. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So he's telling you what Ahiah told him. He said, hear the instruction of a father. Continue. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Now we know Solomon had brothers. Yes, he did. From his mother. So this is how you can understand it. This is Yache speaking in Solomon. Because Yache was the only beloved, the only begotten son. Continue. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. And this was the key verse. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Right. The word principal, can you press that? That's eight, what's that, eight, eight seven, seven, two, two, five. The word is roishieta, that's the first. That lets you know wisdom was created first. Right. And we understand it from the precept because he said his true mother gave him life. And also Paul revealed the mystery that Yache came from the father and the mother to be with his wife. And looking further into it, let's look at wisdom and learn more about her. In Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4 to 5. All right. Uh, wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4 For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit And remove from thoughts that are without understanding And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in So there we see wisdom is synonymous with the Holy Spirit right. According to the scriptures Let's continue to wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 22 with them, Solomon chapter 6, verse 22. As for wisdom, what she is, and how she came up, I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into light, and will not pass over the truth. So Solomon is going to declare her to us. 
He's not going to hide who she is. Uh, jump to chapter 7, verse 7, please. Wisdom of Solomon, Solomon, verse 7. Up to verse 12. Okay. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon Elohim, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. Jump to verse 10 to 12, please. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose her instead of light. For the light that cometh from her never goeth out. This is amazing. Chose her instead of light. Because the light that cometh from her never goeth out, right? Right. Who is the light that cometh from her? <laughs> Y'all just said my true brother gave me light. That's right. And he is the light. As John testified, the true light. And he doesn't go out. It's amazing that it's sitting in the scriptures. It was foretelling the light that cometh from her. The first born from the womb of wisdom, the first fruit. That was verse 12? No. No, oh, okay. All things together came to me with her, and innumerable riches in her hands. And I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom goeth before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them. And she is as the mother, and we can further confirm her in uh, uh, Sirach chapter 24, verse 1. She is speaking herself. So, Acts 24, verse 1. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of Eluya Ono shall she open her mouth. Eluya Ono. That's in the English as most high. In the Hebrew language, Elu means up. Right. Ya means him, that one. And Ono means sit. So, Eluya Ono, the one that sits on high. This is in the Hebrew document as well to understand that it's our language. Thank you, praise Ah, yeah. In the congregation of Eluja Uno shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. Hmm. I came out of the mouth of Eluja Uno. What did she say? I came out of the mouth of Eluja Uno. <laughs> I came out of the mouth of Eluja Uno. He breathed and spoke. That's right. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? That the scriptures just. It testifies of what is true. <laughs> it's amazing. And Yache himself, he did something in the New Testament that showed exactly how she was made. In John 20 and 22, he says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Remember he said he came to do all things his father do right. right. So it's just amazing that the scriptures. He, just <laughs> he did what he knew. He did what he knew happened. So we praise Ahaya. Continuing in Sirach verse 4. And cover the earth as a cloud. And cover the earth as a cloud. And continue. I dwelt in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. Mm. Now this is amazing because right. Enoch saw the place where she is. You can go to Enoch chapter 42, please. Enoch chapter 42, what verse? Just verse 1 and 2, please. Okay. Wisdom found no place where she might dwell. Then the dwelling place was assigned her in the heavens. Wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men and found no dwelling place. Wisdom returned to her place and took her seat among the angels. Now it's amazing that wisdom went forth in the earth to find a place to dwell and didn't find it. Right. Because the children of Israel were not born at that time. This is in the days of Enoch. Right. In the book of Sirach, we're going to see that she found a place to dwell and she had dwelt there and rejoiced in serving Ahaya in his temple. We'll go back to uh, Sirach, please. The 24, verse 7 to 12. It reads, with all these I sought rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the Creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. He created me from the beginning, before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. So we see through scripture where the Holy Spirit ended up dwelling. 
when she asked the Father where she should dwell. All right, let's continue learning about the Holy Spirit. Uh, Sirach 24 and 18. Okay. Sirach chapter 24, verse 18. I am the mother of fair love and fear and knowledge and holy hope. Mm -hmm. I therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children which are named of him. Then we see the mother herself. She's eternal as well. Right. So we have the son that has life in himself. The father has life in himself. The mother, she's eternal. So you understand that they are three working together. And in the New Testament, she's known as the spirit of truth and the comforter. If you go to John 14. Verse 16, 17, and 18, and 26. And what we're going to see in the New Testament, they have he in the New Testament. But what they did not show us was that where they put he, the word is actually gender neutral. Like in verse 17, we're going to see the word autos, G846. It's gender neutral. And then in verse 26, there's a word echinos, which means that one. And it's also going to be used for her or herself as well. In verse 16, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither know of him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now, this is interesting. Tap on G846 there, autos. The word is gender neutral. All right. It says, uh, himself, herself, themselves, itself, he, she, it. So we see that what they put in the New Testament, they put he there because the truth was already hidden by the time they were working on the English translation as they promote the three male trinity doctrine. But according to truth, it was a she because we have the Old Testament and the words of Adonayase to confirm that it was a she when you look at Luke 7 and 35. Luke chapter 7 verse 35 mm -hmm. But wisdom is justified of all her children And her right there is Atos right. And we can further confirm that it's a she By who truth is described as in the Old Testament Zerubbabel in the days of the Persians He spake on truth In 1 Ezra chapter 4 verse 38 through 40 He said As for truth it endureth and is always strong, it liveth and conquereth evermore. With her there is no acceptance of persons or rewards, but she doeth the things that are just, and refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. And all men do well like of her works, neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness. And she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Blessed be the Allah I am of truth. So, according to the scriptures, it's a she. So, because it says he there in that part of the New Testament, please understand that's the corruption of our records. But we thank Ahayah, he was gracious to give us the opportunity to know the truth through precepts. Yeah, right? So, that's literally using the same word and choosing when they want to make it a him or a her. Right. So, people can understand. Thank you. Right, let's finish up John 14 26. And Call it right there. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Jump down to verse 26, please. John 14, 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. We've seen all the scriptures from the Old Testament and the records that show that it was feminine. All right, continue. It says, He shall teach you all things. Now tap on the word He. The word there is echinos. And what does the word actually mean, firstly, in the Strong's? It means, the um, Strong's mean that one. It's a neutral thing. Right. These words were neutral words. But for the lack of understanding the truth by the time they were doing these translations. They put the he in there. But we thank Ahaya that he's revealed that it is what it is. Right. That she is the mother. She is the image that the female was made after. Because just as the man was made, Adam was made, and from his rib came the woman. Right. From out of him came the woman. 
out of the Father. She said herself in Sirach chapter 24, that I came out of the mouth of the Most High. So we are living testimony of it. There's the Father, just as we are men, and there's the Mother that came from Him. Uh, even in Wisdom of Solomon 7, she says she's the unspotted mirror image of the Father. Yes. Yes, she did. And I am be gracious. We're going to get to go into that and learn more about her. Finish that verse. It says, uh, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. And we have this great peace in the Holy Spirit right. that's bringing things to our remembrance. This is the Holy Spirit working, the comforter, the mother our mother if we abide in the faith and keep the commandments and believe in Yachim and Mashiach and bearing the fruits of the spirit so now you have an understanding of the Allah I am a true understanding right. the father the son and the mother the Holy Spirit I be with you Shalom. Shalom.